key policies that are in the 2017 manifestos. What I'd contend is there's been a big sea change in British politics as a result of Brexit in 2016, more of a like we saw in 1997 with Mrs Thatcher being elected in 1945 World War II with the Liberal government of 1906. There's a big change occurring because if we look at the Conservative manifesto, for example, we can see really a shift from free market ideas of Thatcherism to one nation conservatism and more traditional conservative values such as pragmatism, such as popular authoritarianism and uh, social conservatism. For example, we've got um, bringing immigration down to the tens of thousands, which of course um, um, is a good example of a sort of socially conservative policy rather than a liberal policy, a free market liberal policy anyhow. Um, and that necessarily involves a hard Brexit, some would say, leaving the single market and of course leaving the customs union and the European Court of Justice. On taxation, we might see tax increases such as income tax increases because they've ended up a triple lock on taxation. That was on the VAT income tax and also on the um, national insurance. So one of those may actually increase under a Conservative government. And the idea of fiscal austerity has perhaps been jettisoned and certainly kicked into the long grass somewhat because this, the budget is not to be balanced until 2025. Remember originally it was going to be balanced by 2015. Um, more money for the NHS but not enough to keep up with demand but certainly to keep up with inflation. Um, and of course we have the dementia tax that backfired. In its new form it can actually be seen as a sort of one nation policy. One nation meaning um, caring for the poor um, and redistributing to the poor so as to um, have one nation rather than two nations of course. Um, so to some extent um, condoned being in favour of, of uh, government intervention, of state intervention. Um, uh, uh, examples of more populist um, social conservative type policies will be having grammar schools and preschools and what's remarkable is the energy price cap. This could be a social democratic policy that Miliband, and indeed it was in 2015, and it was um, the Labour were accused of being Marxist and dangerous. But here it is in the Conservative Manifesto. Similar with worker representatives on large company boards, minimum wage increasing to 60% of the adult meaning, uh, median earnings by 2020. Again, interference in the market. Uh, council housing as well is in the manifesto. So this is quite a remarkable change in the Conservative Manifesto and a movement towards um, more state involvement and away from the ideology of the free market. Um, so we see elements of pragmatism there. Um, but for Labour Party, we certainly see a movement away from new Labour, as we'd expect with Corbyn, and certainly social democratic policies all the way through. So higher rates of tax, corporation tax at 20%, income tax up to 40%, 5% for those earning over 80,000, top 5%. The top rate of tax to go up to 50% on earnings. Uh, again, a rejection of fiscal austerity, the, well, uh, which, which, which you'd expect from Corbyn. Uh, so expenditure and tax revenue to balance by the end of Parliament. 250 billion on national infrastructure. So these are all social democratic policies. In other words, redistribution of income and wealth from the rich to the poor to create a more equal society by outcome. And that's a move towards social democracy. Um, again, more spending on the NHS, the reversal of privatisation the NHS, the National Education Service, um, a reversal of tuition fees and educational maintenance grants being paid. These are expensive policies, about 12, well, 11 billion there. Um, again, the, the, these are in line with social democracy and that sort of thing, I suppose, 45, 51, the Labour government might have done. Right, we have nationalisation. This is the first time nationalisation has been in the Labour Party manifesto since the 80s and certainly since 1983. It's not to the same extent as 1983, but we could argue this is uh, pure socialism, the idea of replacing capitalism and the profit motive with a nationalised industry run in the public interest. So we've got rail, the Royal Mail, now lots of some aspects of the energy industry. We've got minimum wage, of course, going up to £10 in the end of zero hour contracts. Those are good social democratic type policies and a movement away uh, towards the left from, Ed Mill from uh, Blair and Brown. Uh, 
Liberal Democrats, we can see a one second referendum on the EU and they're pro-immigration. This is a good example of internationalism, uh, which has always been a Liberal Democrat um, um, sort of concept. Um, redistribution a little bit, a new liberalism we can see for 1% increase in income tax and an increase in corporation tax to 20%. The legalisation of soft drugs is a very good example of social liberalism and the Liberal Democrats being in the vanguard of that. You could go to Cafe Hash, uh, spend some money on soft drugs and contribute about 1 billion for the rest of the country in terms of tax revenue. The Greens want a universal basic income, uh, an, an interesting policy. And UKIP, of course, want typically popular authoritarian policies such as zero immigration, the grammar school in every town and the banned public wearing of face coverings. So I hope that you can see there's been some interesting changes. Uh, the Conservatives to an extent have moved on to UKIP territory, 